Hi folks, this is Jason and I hope you're okay today. I just want to share with you for a little time about Greg Benson and his influence on me in apologetics. As people know I've studied at two theological seminaries and read a lot of different theological books and apologetic works and I have to say that I've never met an apologist and his apologetic that is more devastating um, to um, skepticism than Greg Banson's um, apologetic method. Uh, for me, I, I'm influenced by uh, a number of streams of I don't just have one method. I'm not tied into presuppositional apologetics alone. I believe in using other methodologies as well. I, I've, I've used the minimal fact approach. I've used um, other methodologies and stuff like that. And so, you know, I'm not advocating a one um, apologetic method. I think Francis Schaeffer, Francis Schaeffer used evidentialism and presuppositionalism together. Um, but in terms of um, as a as a as an apologetic, I just want to share with you what Greg Banson has done for me in, in my faith, and share a little bit about Greg Banson. I read, I, I listened to a number of his lectures uh, and found them immensely stimulating, immensely strengthening. Anthony, uh, is the sheer robustness of the guy, his lectures, especially when it comes to uh, skepticism, are absolutely devastating. Um, and I found is the way he conducted conducted himself was, and the arguments that he used, they were very powerful arguments. Uh, his lectures on how to defend the faith, how to do an internal critique critique of uh, another person's world view, his understanding of world view and all these things uh, have been helpful to me, his understanding of philosophy um, his papers on uh, ancient Greek philosophy his papers on uh, skepticism um, have been an absolute blessing and sheer joy for me um, I can honestly say that I've never read or listened who has encouraged me and strengthened my belief in Christianity as Greg Banson. Um, he was influenced by Cornelius Van Til and he's done a lecture on Cornelius Van Til. Cornelius Van Til said, all reasoning is in the nature of the case circular reasoning. The starting point, the method and the conclusion are always involved in one another. Van Til, The Defense of Faith, page 101. Um, so, Greg Banson was influenced by uh, Van Til. I don't, because I'm influenced by Greg Banson, doesn't mean to say that I actually endorse everything that he believed. I think he went overboard with um, the Rashuni, mo Rashuni movement that wanted to apply law of the Old Testament to politics. And I think that Greg Banson went. And became a bit unbalanced there. But having said that, you can't get away from the fact that he was a brilliant in, in as a philosopher, uh, and that his training in philosophy was masterful in his defence of the Christian faith. Um, so, what is presuppositional apologetics? And uh, presuppositional apologetics is basically looking at the presuppositions of a person's position. Everybody has a world view. The atheist who said that they don't believe in God due to a lack of evidence uh, because there's a lack of evidence has a world view and we can critique that world view and as we critique it uh, we begin to see problems. So if you turn, if you look at like Bertrand Russell, why I'm not a Christian New York and, and uh, Shuster 1957 he says the man is a product of cause which had no prevision of the end they were achieving 
that his origin, his growth, his hopes, fears, his loves and beliefs are but the outcome of accidental collocations of atoms, that no fire, no heroism, no intensity of thought <coughs> and feeling can preserve an individual life beyond the grave, that all labours of all of the ages, all the devotion, all the inspiration, all the noonday brightness of human genius are destined to extinction, that the whole temple of man's achievements must inevitably be buried. All these things, if not quite beyond dispute, are yet so nearly certain that no philosophy which rejects them can hope to stand only within the scaffolding of these truths. Only can the soul's habitation henceforth be safely built. Now, if you unpack that, there's lots of ideas there underlying what he's saying about reality. He's, in, he's assuming that there is no supernatural realm. He's, a, he's assuming... Um, knowledge that there is some kind of knowledge about the universe um, he's assuming all sorts of things that philosophically speaking you can call him out on and question him um, so what a presuppositional apologist does is basically um, critique a person's pre-ideas. You see, take a, an empiricist, say someone believes all the only knowledge that we can have is empiricism, that is scientific knowledge. A presuppositionalist would would call such a would, would challenge the underlying preconceptions to that worldview. So for example the empiricist says, well, the only knowledge that we can have is scientific knowledge of the senses, etc. And so you can question, well, is all that there is is the material? And we can show that logic is not material, which would dent empiricism. We can show that contingency uh, is assumed uh, in natural events and that presupposes uh, uh, a, a maker. Uh, we can question uh, presuppositions, we can look at the nature of logic and what we're doing is we're peeling back empiricism and, and seeing that behind empiricism lies ideas that are assumed and not proven and what we do then is look whether those ideas are consistent with reality or not. So that's the kind of presuppositional methodology you, you, you can talk about the nature of truth like Saiten Brugenkate does. You can talk about the nature of logic which Greg Banson would do. But all your time what you're doing is you're recognizing that every person has ideas behind their ideas that they cannot prove and that we have to look at and question. Um, in 2029 in the presuppositional concept of presupposition this is interesting. Don Collett argues that traditional forms of argument do not do justice to presupposition as a concept. He works from Peter Strawson's semantic account of presupposition. According to Strawson, a statement A may be said to presuppose a statement B if B is a necessary precondition of the truth or falsity of A. Strawson's, Strawson's interpretation of the concept is related in succinct fashion by Bess van Frassen as follows a presupposition B if only if A is neither true nor false unless B is true. This may, may, may be stated as follows A presupposes B if only if A is true then B is true. If A is true then B is true. Colette van Til and and the transcendental argument revisited, there are potential difficulties with the account of presupposition in question and where Colette goes from here as well, but the purpose of this post is not to delve into the, these problems. There is also no effort made to discuss the depth, the pragmatic account of presupposition or its consequence, especially with respect to covenantal apologetics. Rather, I merely point out that Vanson's understanding of presupposition appears to be much more in line with what is not position rather than the semantic account. There are in philosophy two traditional accounts of presupposition. One is semantic while the other 
pragmatic. P. F. Strawson writes, a statement S presupposes a statement S in the sense that the truth of S is a precondition of the truth and falsity of S. Strawson, uh, Introduction to Logical Theory 175. Note then, if S is false, then S is neither true nor false. The semantic concept of presupposition requires truth value gaps. Of this conception of presupposition, not every proposition is true or false. Others have disregard with the aforementioned account of presupposition and argued for a pragmatic concept instead. Quote, the pragmatic conception does not appeal to truth conditions, but instead contrasts what a speaker presupposes and what that speaker asserts. So you can see presuppos presuppositions are beliefs that the speaker takes for granted. If these beliefs are false, the utterance will be inappropriate in some way, but it does not follow that the sentence utters like a truth value. It's speakers rather than sentences or statements that have presuppos presuppositions. No truth value gaps are required. Audi Cambridge Dictionary and Philosophy, uh, page 735. We read from Van Til, uh, Banson on Van Til Apologetic. A presupposition is an elementary assumption in one's reasoning or in the process by which opinions are formed. In this book, a presupposition is not just any assumption in an argument, but a personal commitment that is held at the most basic level of one's network of beliefs. Presuppositions form a wide-ranging foundational perspective or starting point in terms of which everything else is interpreted and evaluated authority in one's thinking being treated as one least negotiable beliefs are being granted the highest immunity to revision. So basically there what I've just given you is to show you that not even Christian apologists or even skeptical apologists would recognize or really understand that there's actually in philosophy um, complex nuances about what a presupposition is. But what I'm showing you there is Greg Banson had a particular understanding of what a presupposition is. I think maybe, uh, I couldn't prove it, but I think maybe that's influence, influenced by not just Calvin, uh, not just uh, Cornelius Van Til, but also by uh, Dutch Reformed Calvinist uh, philosophers and theologians. Uh, that's just an aside. The point that I'm getting at now, I know that was very complex for some of you, but the point what I'm trying is Greg Banson's idea of, of presuppositions uh, what a person holds that's unproven and assumptions and then what Greg Banson would do then is take those presuppositions and test them against reality so a typical example would be to take a skeptic a typical atheist and then what he would do is he would say okay let me test your presuppositions, you, you, the ideas that you have that you, you, you can't prove, for example, your view of reality that you say, most atheists will say, not all, but uh, all that there is is ma the material. Greg Banton would say, well, let's critique this presupposition. And then he would say, uh, is the law of non-contradiction, is that material or immaterial? The atheist, being honest, would say it's immaterial, and then he would say, well, that's contradicting your worldview that all there is is the material. So what he's done is done an internal critique. Another example, he would take the Quran and he would do an internal critique, critique of Islam showing the inconsistency of that worldview, um, specifically looking at the, the Quran itself and seeing how its claims for authority don't stack up that there are contradictions within those claims. For example, uh, in the Quran, it claims to be the word of God, and Muslims then throw the charge that the Bible's changed, but yet, within the Islamic system, if you go to Bukhari Hadith and you read about Uthman, he burned uh, Quranic texts in order to make one recension. So, Greg Banson would look at the internal, internal inconsistencies within some of the foundational uh, beliefs of Islam and show the inconsistency. He does. He, Greg Banson uh, did it with evolution. He provided some of the uh, deconstructed it in such a brilliant way by showing, for example, the mathematical.
probability improbability of evolution etc so he what you're doing is what, what I like about Greg Banton what encourages me what strengthens my faith is he encourages you to be bold in critiquing other people's views other people's ideas their pre ideas and to tr do an internal critique of those ideas to recognize that every person has a worldview beliefs about reality that need to be challenged um, so I, I, I can only say that I've been to two seminaries I've read many apologetic books I've read philosophers like Foucault and people like that and I can honestly say I've not read anybody as powerful and my faith as uh, Greg Vanson and I owe him an eternal debt because he really really uh, has been a great blessing to me if you type in true forms Greg Banson you'll be able to find a website where you can read Greg Banson's articles and uh, they'll be a blessing to you um, so I'd encourage you to read Greg Banson uh, listen to his videos uh, you can go on YouTube and find his videos and I'd encourage you to, to look into him he is absolutely brilliant and I just love the guy and I owe him an immense debt from God Thank you for listening and God bless you.